The Big Five Divorce Myths. I'm Susie Miller, your Alternative Divorce Guide. Myth number four. I've been betrayed and if I have my day in court, I'll feel compensated. I'll feel like that there's some kind of resolution. True or false? A barrister told me recently that if you go into court as a couple who are going through divorce to have your case heard by the judge, you might as well just toss a coin to see which way it's going to go. And it's, it is a case of, is that person or that person? There's, there's, there's no room for ne real negotiation. There is a sense of there's going to be a winner and there's a loser. And you can never know who that's going to be when you go in. So it's a big gamble. And when we talk about winning and losing, going into the divorce court, is a, a meaningless term because everybody loses when you get to that stage. You lose money, you lose so much time, you lose a sense of or any possibility quite often of, of a new and healthy post-divorce relationship with someone who may well be the parent of your, your, your one of your children. So you... You destroy, you break all those bridges down. And I think it's also very important for people to understand that when they go into a courtroom, no one's list, no one's interested. The judge isn't interested in your emotional history and what he's done or what she's done. And this is a massive misconception people have. You will not be heard if you go to court. This is a legal process, there has to be a decision. If you want to feel heard, if you want your ex to understand where you are or how you feel and they're not listening to you, then the way to do that is not to go to court but to use processes like mediation and collaborative law. Because actually they can be very healing. In order to, uh, to hold a discussion by two, with two people going through such a major life shift, a, a skilled mediator or collaborative lawyers will will allow you to express how you feel and they will encourage the other person to hear. They will also encourage you to speak without judgment. It's not an excuse to attack the other person. But you can talk about how you feel, what's going on for you. That is critical actually in the process because quite often that's not happened in that relationship for a very, very long time. Sometimes it's never happened. So strangely, that uh, opportunity to do that, it can be a very healing. Probably that's the reason why some people who head off down the divorce route um, don't even go the whole way because they discover they when they trust start to trust each other to listen to each other, they 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 can able to reignite their relationship. But in perhaps the majority of cases, people are in the divorce arena for a very good reason. But they do need to understand each other's point of view. They do need to learn how to stand in each other's shoes. And this is where relationship coaching can be very important. This is not to be confused with going to relate. Relate is, although they do cover that as well, tends to be seen by people as that's what we do to, to, to save our marriage or, or to keep it together. And that's brilliant. But once you've made an absolute decision that that's not the route you want to take, then working with... Uh, counsellors and coaches in particular as well who, who are helping you to look forward who may or may not be relate trained they will be able to give you the skill set to communicate with each other when you're in the middle of a very emotional and difficult situation the lucky thing is that a lot of these skills these tools that they'll they, they can teach you are incredibly useful for, for your children as well and for you to help you to work with your children. These are life skills actually that you will use for the rest of your life so it's a great opportunity to learn them. So I really do encourage people to not see going to court as a way to be heard because it's, it's just not what's going to happen. If you want to be heard, you work, try to persuade your, your ex um, to go with you and work with a, relationship, a skilled relationship coach who can teach you both techniques that will work for you to communicate. And if you've got kids, you need to learn how to do that. Even if it's going to be on the phone, even if you're not happy to meet up, 
even if you have to do it all through an online um, resource like Kids on Time where you're, you're using an online diary because you actually are not able to talk to each other at that time without upsetting each other. Create your boundaries, be practical, but know that as time progresses, you will, once you start putting that in place, you will, over a period of time, start to be able to get to the point where you can sit and have a coffee with that person, maybe in years to come, rather than having to do it all by an online resource like Kids on Time or, or email. But learn those skills, those communication skills. You were not born with them. You probably didn't learn them from your parents or any of the teachers you had at school. Don't expect yourself just to know all this stuff. This life change you're going through is a fantastic opportunity to learn some really valuable skills that you, that you will use to your advantage and your family's advantage for the rest of your life. When you go to court, especially if it's for emotional reasons, to feel heard or the myth that you've, you've believed that this is what's going to happen, you are putting your family at great risk of harm. There is another myth about uh, divorce damages children. P some parents may not like hearing me say this, but divorce itself, family breakup itself, does not necessarily harm your children. Obviously it puts them under immense stress. It's not, it's not a, 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 by choice, you wouldn't want that to happen to your children. But it does not permanently damage them. What does statistically proven, uh, particularly through in-depth long-term American studies, happen is that if you have parents who are adversarial towards each other, are angry, no matter how much they try to hide it from their children, this does immense long-term damage to those children. It affects their own well-being, it affects the, the kind of relationships they can have uh, successfully in the future. It can also lead to, very often, to self-harming, even to suicidal behaviour. So just be aware with your children. Don't, rather than feeling guilty about the divorce, don't worry about that. Think about how do we show our children or how do we act as role models about how to deal with a very difficult time in our lives in a way that they feel where they are loved and cared for by both parents and none of it is to do with them because they will tend to blame themselves, especially young children. It's important to be aware of that. And to be open about what's going on and not have to hide things because you don't need to hide it because you're not having an all out battle. You're just working your way through and trying to find the best routes forwards. And you're not pretending that you're some kind of superhuman who doesn't feel pain or fear or anger. But do not direct your anger about your ex in front or even a mile from your children because when you criticise the other parent, you are criticising 50% of that child. And they know that. So be aware of that all the time. That every time you head down the adversarial route, you are putting your family and your children at risk. <laughs>